Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bluffton High School, where tonight the homestanding Pirates welcome in league rivals Spencerville Bearcats. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Jerry Snodgrass and our entire WOSN crew. Jerry, we take a look at both of these teams tonight. It's a key NWC clash, and we look at their overall records and the teams they played, and it's not the offensive end. It's the defensive end. They're having trouble stopping, and it's got to be a key to winning the ballgame tonight. Yes, it is. And, you know, you look at Bluffton, one of their big things is no turnovers. Last week, First two possessions of the game, a turnover on each possession. You're asking for a lot out of your kids to fight back from that, both mentally and physically. So, and the big thing is, as you said, you know, first game of the uh, NWC, both records the same. But they're both 0-0 zero and zero in the NWC. Absolutely. That's a great point. We take a look at the visiting Spencerville Bearcats. They come in at 1-2 and two overall, offensively averaging 14.6 a game, defensively 26 points a game they give up. Now, Jerry, we know that Spencerville, traditional power I team, they've went to the spread this year. How's that working out for Chris Summers well, and his crew? Well, yeah, it is, except for, you know, they are last in the of all the conference teams in scoring right now. But I think that just takes some time to get used to. Sure. And I one of the big things for Bluffton is they want to prevent that big play when you go to the spread you know you're 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 trying for that big play so that's a big challenge for Bluffton and the, and the Bluffton Pirates, they come in at 1-2 and two offensively, averaging 31 a game, giving up 26 a game, and they are led by the Bogart brothers, one at quarterback, one at tailback. They form a pretty good tandem. Yeah, they do, and you know, the Bogart at quarterback, he's much more of a distributor. Yes, You know, yes. In, in their option-based offense, you know, where last year they, they, had a, they had a running back playing quarterback, sure. and by Coach Richards' admission, or admission. A tough kid, a real tough kid. That's exactly yeah. right. But this, this one, this year, he's a little bit more of a distributor, and I think that gives them a little bit more balance, which is a key for them tonight. So here comes the Bearcats on offense. They'll be led by quarterback Josh Henline. The senior is 44 of 78 for 536 yards, three touchdowns and three interceptions. His top target this year is wide receiver Nate Colter, who was the quarterback last year. He's got 291 yards and three touchdowns. So they like to fling it around, Jerry, and you're going to see a lot of high-powered stuff from the Bearcats. Yeah, you are. And, you know, uh, Bluffton is a you know 3-4 defensive team, good linebacking, and we'll talk about them throughout the game, but we'll challenge those defensive backs. So as we say they're going to fling it around, Jerry, they come out in the power eye. <laughs> Yeah. Hand the ball off Number to Carter Lehman, which they will do, and yeah, Carter Lehman is an effective runner. You know, there's there's something to be said about that, though. You know, <laughs> so much is spent time spent on analytics. Yes. You know, we the bottom not. line is sometimes you just don't know. That's right. You're right. So here's Henline. He's in the gun. He's got three to his right. He's got one to the left. He's got a single set back. Well, we got a man from Bluffton who jumps just a little too quick. That looks like number 27, Landon Worcester, the 5'10 sophomore, gets a little antsy and jumps across there. That'll tack on five more yards for the Bearcats. Beautiful night for football here. They've got us sitting outside, which I don't object to. Uh, about uh, low 70s, the sun's right in our eyes, and beautiful field. And we mentioned earlier, Jerry, they've got that grass growing a little bit high tonight. Yes, they do. <laughs> Jeez, and isn't it amazing they're playing a team that passes it around? <laughs> so here comes Henline in the gun. He's got two to his left, two to his right. He's got a single setback. He looks over at Chris Summers, who's in his ninth year this year guiding the Bearcats and changing things up a bit. So here comes Henline in the Bearcats. He'll take the snap. He looks across the field. He's going to go right to the middle. Got his man out on the outside. He's going to go off to the right side. He's got one guy to beat, and he's taken out of bounds. That's number 13 for the Bearcats. That's number Hayden Heyman. And I said Gotts his man. I don't want to have bad proper English, but I got a little excited there. You know, you talked about Coach Chris Summer, and, you know, I had a chance to speak with him before the game and kind of catch up from the old times. Yeah. But at the same time, you talked about them mixing up things a little bit and going with the spread offense. You know, that's the other thing in today's high school world. Kids love it. They do. And, I mean, kids love it. It's, well, it's backyard football. Well, you get eight, nine kids touching the ball, and it's yep. not the same two kids touching the ball every time. You're absolutely right, Jerry. So here comes Henline of the Bearcats. He's going to hand the ball off to Carter Lehman. He's going to go off the right side. He's going to be hit immediately in maybe a yard, maybe a yard and a half. And that is number one for the Pirates Landon Shuttler. Well, you talk about the running game right now, you know, a couple of handoffs, but that was one of Coach Summers' big keys tonight is to try to get a balanced attack. Yeah. You know, yeah, you run the gun, yeah, you you whip it around, but at the same time, we've got to establish a running game, and we know they do. Yeah, and he was he was asked on a radio show earlier this week about his spread offense, and he said, look, he said, we want our kids to be also be tough, yeah. be able to grind wins out, and that looks like that's what they're trying to establish tonight, get that run going. So here comes Henline in the option. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to go around the left end. He picks up about three Josh yards, Henline and the another carry. flag comes down in the field. Brought down by number 21, Gavin Bogart. 
And number 33, Cam Coughlin. Jason so Diller is the defensive coordinator for the Pirates. And, you know, I love to give those other guys, you know, sometimes the Absolutely. guys behind the scenes. Uh, you know, a lot of times people today don't realize that coaching staffs, especially in football, I mean, it's an organization in its own right. Absolutely. Uh, I was talking to Jeff Richards. You know, he, he calls all the plays. I don't know about Coach Summers, but uh, Jeff Richards calls sure. all the plays. And, you know, that's something that's still kind of – I've seen that Ryan Day is getting a lot of grief for yeah, calling right. the plays. and Be a CEO and turn it over. I think that's a little different in high school. I do too. I, I'm I'm a I'm probably a little power hungry, but I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine Somebody turning it did. over. <laughs> it's okay. I'm doing that. <laughs> There's that's my paycheck. He's gonna dump the ball off. This is Carter Lehman, get a little screen pass, and they get back up to the original line of scrimmage. And now it's uh, back to third and about ten. They had a holding penalty before that, so you can't have those penalties. We talked to uh, Coach uh, Summers earlier this week, and he talked about he wants better execution, sustained drives. And he wants to have a balance in the yep. run and pass. And so far, so good. Yep. He, and he's, he's, you know, when, when you script those first 10, 15 plays, I mean, he's scripting those to establish that run game. And, and they're doing it. They're doing it well. You so, keep the defense honest. Absolutely. 8.38 to go here. Third and 11 from the 40-yard line. Danny Homer, Jerry Snodgrass, high school football here on WSN. Here's Henline. He looks across the middle under heavy pressure. Gets it out to Carter Lehman. Carter Lehman catches in the flat. He's going to go up for about four yards, and that's going to bring up fourth down, Jerry. And on this side of the field, what do you think Coach Summers is thinking? Well, I think he's going to go for it. I think he's got, what, six to go, yes, something like that. Fourth and about six from the 35-yard line. Kind of in no man's land. Yeah, there. exactly what I was thinking. You're right. So he is going to go for it. Henline's in the gun. He's got Carter Lehman to his left. He's got two receivers to his right. Colter split out wide. Two to the left. He's in the gun. Looks across at Coach Summers for instructions. And that's the thing now. Everybody sets up and then kind of takes their time yeah. and looks over and sees what the defense has to offer them. 7.51 to go here in the first quarter. No score from Bluffton High School. And they're going to take a yeah, timeout. Part of that is to try to draw people off sides, too. So we got a timeout here on the scoreboard. Our web insurance agency is our scoreboard sponsor tonight. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit Metzger'sFinancialServices.com. We already had a couple first downs tonight, Jerry, and our first down sponsor is Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, and they are hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So fourth and six here, Jerry, what are you thinking? I'm thinking they're going to throw the ball. Oh, I do, they do the best. Yep, I do, too. <laughs> you know, on that last uh, little screen pass, uh, I think it was Landon Worcester come, you know, came yes, flying Yes, he did a great job. He had a great job, sophomore. Only, he had 100 tackles last year. He's, he's one of the great uh, linebackers, inside linebacker yeah. for the Pirates. So headline tries to go across the middle, and the linemen put their hands up, and we're going to get a turnover on down. So a great job from the linemen from Bluffton Headline's High School getting the hands up and deflecting that pass. Brings up a first and ten, Pirates. So here come the Bluffton Pirates on offense. They are led by quarterback, quarterback Garrett Bogart. He's 25 of 46, 383 yards, four touchdowns and one interception, and he's got his brother in the backfield. Garrett Bo or Gavin Bogart, excuse me. He's got eight carries for 159 yards. Jerry averages 19.8 yards yes, a carry. And when I said or I was reading that stat this week, I thought, ah, it's got to be a typo. It's not. No, it is <laughs> not. And you know what? You're talking about a very young, yes. very young Bluffton team. Yeah. So here's Bogart. He's under center. He's got a man in motion. He's got his brother to his right. He's going to hand off to his brother. Oh, he's going to reverse the ball around the left side. Caught me off guard. They hand yeah, the ball Bogart off to carry. number 21, and that is Gavin Bogart. Line. You know, we mentioned that, you know, uh, Garrett Bogart, I'll get the Bring two mixed up all the time. <laughs> We're going to mix them up a I lot know, tonight. So, That's okay. Especially both Just go G's, Bogart. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Garrett, you know, but, you know, he's, he's an option. They're an option-based offense. Yes. Yep. And run a lot of stuff out of the pistol. And we'll yes. kind of talk about that in a little bit. That, but first snap, he was under center. He's under center again. And he's got Landon Worcester in the backfield. He hands off to Worcester. He goes to the right side looking for a little room. He's got up across the 50, goes to almost the 45, takes down a tackler. He gets up to Landon about the 43. The a big-time run by Landon Worcester. And, you know, that stopping, stopping the option – is a very, very challenging thing. That goes back to something that Chris Summers said, yes. is they really need to maintain their assignments. Yes. And that's hard to do when you don't see it every week. 
Absolutely. So that's a Charles River first down by the Bluffton Pirates. 7.20 to go here in the first quarter. 0-0 zero, zero on our web insurance scoreboard. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from Bluffton High School on a beautiful Friday night. Week four of the high school football in the state of Ohio. Here's another handoff up the middle. He's got daylight. He gets through two runners. He goes up to about the 25-yard. Landon Worcester across the 25-yard line. Brings up another first and 10. Jerry, if they establish that run, that's going to be a hard thing for Spencerville because they're just getting big 10, 12-yard chunks yes, right now. Yes, they are. And, you know, they're not going to vary from it. I mean, they're <laughs> they're going to – you're not going to see oh, – of course, they'll come out and throw this time. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, Absolutely. That they're establishing that run. And, you know, again, throw the analytics out. You know, right. take something away. Absolutely. Now there you see them in the pistol. They're going to hand off again, and the Bearcats aren't fooled by that. Yeah. They'll get maybe half a yard there. That'll bring up second down for the Pirates. Landon Worcester on the carry, brought down by number 21, Kyle Heckman, and a bunch of Bearcats. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to mattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Now, we're not in the red zone just yet, but I thought we'd give them their, uh, their, their just dues. You know, I talked about them being a very young team. Uh, Jacob Granger, right guard, is really one of the most, only veteran players sure, on the line. Sure. Um, they have a player, Riley Greer, uh, played last year, but is out until mid-October. But uh, Greer's, uh, Granger's the leader of that group, and they really count on Landon him. Landon Worcester again on the carry. And Landon Worcester goes up again Tripped for up about five or six yards, and we've got an injury down on the field. And uh, I'm trying to make Official out the number here, out. but he's grabbing his knee, which doesn't look good, and he is in some serious pain. So we're going to let them tend to that young man on the field. We're going to take another timeout. 5.54 to go here in the first quarter. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School, where as just as we talk about him, number 59, Jacob Granger, Jerry, is the man down on the field, but he does walk off on his own, so which is a great sign. That's a, that's a great sign that he walked off because yeah. he was holding the knee, yes. I think, on yeah. the way down. And I'm going to go back and edit this <laughs> what plan. You just talking well, about yeah. you know, his leadership and everything else. And like you said, the curse of the announcer. Absolutely. But, uh, but I'm glad to see him walk in, and I think he'll be back in. So a big third down here, third and four from the 20-yard line, 5.54 to go, zeros on the scoreboard. Bluffton trying to punch it in right here. I was talking to Coach Richards earlier today, yeah. and he talked about, you know, to sustain a drive because of those turnovers last week. But he said, we've got to stay away from those third and longs. So... You know, we're about midway, he's got an open field in front of him. He's got a manageable third down. He's going to pick up the first down, and he's going to be taken out of bounds. That's another Garrett Web Insurance first down. So, look, we talked a lot about both teams having trouble defensively. Spencerville gave up 340 yards to Elida in game one. They gave up 259 to Paulding, 420 to Fort Lormie. you got to believe the Bluffton coaches saw a lot on tape. Yes, they did. And, you know, you got to remember, the teams they've played up till now are good teams. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah, that's absolutely. the other part of that. Thing. You know, that's – and you give a lot of credit for uh, – or maybe blame sometimes. Sure, I don't know. Sure. I'm just joking. But, you know, on scheduling good opponents out of league. Yeah, and I had Spencerville earlier this year against Delight, and Delight is a solid team. And they just – they had some miscues, but, uh, you know, they played with them for a while. So here come the Pirates. They'll go to the right side. A little option run there. This is Worcester as he goes to the right side. He gets taken down right around the five – maybe the six-yard line. It's going to bring up Bogart's second and goal. Boy, Griffin Stackhouse had a line. great block on the outside. And right now, Jerry, we're carry. seeing the Bluffton offensive line really work as a unit, and they are Vance really piling up the yardage. Up and you know, when you're young and, you know, you don't have a lot of experience, you've got to count on working together and Absolutely. talking amongst each other. You know, as I watch high school teams and you watch that offensive line unit, when you see a good offensive line unit, you know they're being coached well because i got to believe it's one of the toughest units to coach, get everybody on the same page. Yep. So here's Landon Worcester, and we've got a penalty, it looks like, and they're going to stop the play there. I think they're calling that encroachment against the defense. I think Flag you are right. Play. Yep. You know, you talk about that offensive All line. Spencer, yes. You know. Uh, Ryman, is it Ryman? Or, yes. Okay. Uh, Ryman, Culver, Diller, Granger, uh, Fredericks, you know, and their offensive line coach, um, you know, is is Jason Granger. And, you know, again, I love to give – affectionately, I will call Absolutely. them the Hogs. The ho oh, yeah. But I love to give those Hogs. The their, old Washington their Redskins. The yep. old Washington Redskins. The big slobber knockers, yep. as they used to call them. So, good job for those young men. They are dominating this football game right now. So, 5.02 to go, second and three from the three-yard line. 
Bogart's trying to punch one in for the Pirates. He's got Worcester in the back. He's got one to the right, two to the left. He's in the gun. He's got a man that's moving off to the right side. He's going to hand the ball off to Worcester, and he's going to go right into the end zone for a Pirate touchdown. Landon Worcester takes in from about three yards out, and the Pirates lead 6 to nothing on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Probably no better person to get that carry than That's Worcester. That's a great point. That's a great he's, point, Jerry. You know, he, he carried it all the way down for the most part, and he's done some damage here in the first quarter. So the Pirates take the early 6 nothing lead. 4.48 to go. Big crowd on hand tonight in this wonderful weather for both schools. Kyle Basil in a kick for the Pirates. Kyle Basil tries to make it a 7-0 game. Kick is and he good. does. Jerry, he could have kicked that from 50 Holy yards cow. Out. That was seven, impressive. <laughs> Not just the distance, but the speed at which that came off his foot. So with 4.48 to go here in the first quarter, the Bluffton Pirates take a 7-0 lead. You're watching high school sports right here on WOSN. At this time, we, the Welcome back to Bluffton High School. Well, Jerry, we look at uh, some of the keys to the game that the Bluffton coaches gave to us. Take care of the ball on offense, check. Prevent big plays on defense, check. Win the kicking game, I'm here to tell you, if it comes down to a kicking game, I feel real good about the young man from Bluffton. And I don't want to jinx that guy, but if it's the same guy kicking, and it is, I, you know, I don't want to see him squib, you know, squib. No, 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 no. I want to see him put it out of the end zone. Kyle, ba ba excuse me, Kyle Basil, the junior, 6'1 junior, and uh, he has got a cannon for a leg, if you want to call that. So let's see how far he can put it in the end zone. My son was a kicker, so I there you go. Yeah, you like love the those kickers. Yep. So Nate Colder on the left side of the field back for the Bearcats. I got to believe they want to keep it away from him. But also you got Carter Lehman back there. So two really dangerous return men for the Bearcats. He puts that one high. That's a great kick. This is Nate Colder. He gets it about the five. He comes across the 15 and that's or the 20, and that's where he'll be taken down. Great coverage by Bluffton. Well, I think we we always talk about the length of a kick, but sometimes we forget the height of a kick is what makes you get down there and cover your man. Yeah, that gave that gave that kickoff return team or kickoff team a great opportunity to get down and cover. So the Pirates up seven to nothing here with 4:40. In the game in the first quarter, Josh Henline from Spencerville trying to get his troops back on track. And they'll start from the 20-yard line, first and 10. He's got trips to his right. He's got a single set back, and he's got one to the left. He's in the gun. He's got the ball. He looks across, goes to his left side. He's got Nate Colder out there, goes across the 30 to about the 32. That's where he'll be taken down, and that's another Web Insurance two, first Nate down. Coulter. Pushed out of bounds by number 11, Braden Jordan. And that, Jerry, when you look at that, that's extensively basically a, a long handoff. When you throw out in the flat like that, two to three yards, you give Colder a chance to use his athleticism. Yes, and, you know, Bluffton was sending, uh, I, I think it was, and again, First it helped me. I've seen this pronounced both nine. ways. Is it Coughlin or Coughlin here? I'm going to go Coughlin. I, okay, <laughs> I am too. Uh, but they had they sent him, uh, uh, you know, on the blitz that time. And again, Worcester's coming that time. So they're putting line, pressure. Yeah, they are. You're they're doing everything right. they can to put pressure on him. They knocked him Balls down, and his intended target, Hayden Heyman, and he threw behind him. Line. But I'm going to give Henline a little credit there. He was under tremendous yes, pressure. Yes, he was. Yeah. So that'll bring up second and ten with 4:16 to go. Tonight's game will be rebroadcast on WOSN Saturday. That's tomorrow, Saturday at 9 p.m. <clears throat> Defensively, we look at, at the Bluffton Pirates. 420 passing yards, 161 rushing yards. And Landon Wooster, 31 yeah. tackles this year. That's that's crazy, Jerry. Yep. It's a tackle machine. That's Chris Spielman type numbers. <laughs> and he's physical. Yes, he I is. I mean, let alone as a runner, but also on the defensive side. Carter Lehman takes the ball across the Carter almost Lehman to the quarter for about a yard Brought gain. Down by number 65, Preston Culver. Very short gain on the carry. Brings up third and about nine from the third. Our touchdown sponsor five. tonight is Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks Again, and novelty items. Open WOSN seven days a week from nine to night, eight. Saturday Springfield Fireworks is our touchdown sponsor. It's appropriate for a fireworks company to be a touchdown <laughs> sponsor. See some of those shot off tonight. Here comes Henline as he throws it out in the flat to Carter Lehman, he goes across about the original line of scrimmage, but a great Headline job of pursuit. Everybody stayed at home for the Pirates, and they took care of business there. Bought down by number 33 for the Pirates, Cam Coughlin. 
And there's that name, Landon Wooster. He's on offense. He's on defense. Yeah, and he's they everywhere. sent, once again, they sent Cameron Coughlin in, you know, again, trying to put pressure, trying so, to get the quick pass. So fourth and eight, and that'll bring out Henline to punt the ball back to the Pirates. So not to what Chris Summers had imagined about keeping that drive Spencer alive. So they're going to give the ball Josh back Henline to Bluffton. Back to back, back deep is Landon, Landon Shuttler. 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 And number and 11, Jordan. Braden Jordan is back deep. This is Braden Jordan. He's going to receive the kick at about the 30-yard line. He's going to come up, goes across the 40, gets to the 45, oh, almost to the 45, and taken down. And that's going to be a horse collar tackle on number 67 by the Bearcats. Right and that was Isaac, Isaac Kill. Kill. And we talk about great punters and great kickers and the height. Josh Henline that time, great punt. Well, you see it just about every week. Uh, a lot of high schools that don't have the numbers, you usually have your best athlete back there punting. Josh Henline, the quarterback, and he does a nice job. Well, you know, too, that's something, too, that an awful lot of teams, you know, or kids, I should say, you know, it's a skill now that people sure. are realizing, I can go to college doing this. Absolutely. I can go free doing this. The punting game, the kicking game, yeah. and, and the other thing, the long snapping game. Oh, yeah. Guys are getting, getting recruited for long snapping and for being the center position. And then you go back to, you know, the, to not just the, the, you know, the, the college opportunities, sure. but, you know, seldom did they get hurt. Absolutely. It's a 15-yard penalty. So lots of big games tonight in the area, Jerry. So we're Once sitting again, here at uh, Bluffton High School. But uh, what, what, what's your thoughts, Jerry, on, on the early start this year? You a fan of it, not a fan? You set me up. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I don't like it. I love asking you yeah, tough questions, Jerry. I don't like it. And I'll tell you, you know, my, 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 ba my background of saying that is I happen to be the president of the board of directors uh, when it was discussed about an earlier practice start. Sure. You may remember. Uh, I'll, let's yeah, go we'll ahead take this play. That was Gavin number Bogart 21, Gavin Bogart, around the right end. Gets again, about three yards. That'll bring Raymond. up a third and Gave about seven. About but many people remember that the start of football practice used to be the first Monday in Saturday. August. So it could be as late as August uh, 6th. And I remember I was the board president, so I wasn't working there, sure. when the proposal was to go to the first day of August. And I remember the staff at the OHSA at that time said, that's it. We are not, we are not going to go into July. It's family time, vacations, uh, that's all changed that's, now. That's out the window, yep. Jerry. Yep. And you know the craze of football, the craze of fall sports, sports has done that. But I'm just a believer and I don't, I don't. No, 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 absolutely. And I'm not, you know, I'm not passing judgment, you know, at anything when they can do. It's just my opinion well, is kind of enough is out. enough. And I worry down the road that it's going to lead to, you know, to our local a burnout to some degree. I mean, well, today. I'm all about uh, kids uh, getting Jordan time off, and I, I completely Austin agree with Rose. you, and, and you're you right. Gentlemen. Sometimes it's too much of a good thing. I, look, I love football as much as you do, and we, we could do it all year round, but I also realize that these kids have to be well-rounded and, yes. and get involved in other sports. And, and look, I see a lot of big-time athletes being recruited on the basketball floor that are, that are football standouts. You've seen it, baseball, track, other things like that. And it's very difficult today. It, it's such a challenge for kids to play multiple sports. It, it is. just is. It is. And, and you, you get these smaller schools, and, and you need the kids to play sure more do. than one sport. So when a kid says to me, I'm going to stick, you know, maybe with football or just basketball, I always tell them, look, expand your horizons. Go out there. Try out for the team. Do whatever you have to do. Help your school out. So, yeah, I think we're on the same page with that. So I, I think sometimes, too, Danny, I, I, I say this often with things that from coaching, from administrating, um, I look at things from the outside looking in now. Sure. And I see it in a different perspective. Yeah. And I, probably as a basketball coach, I'll be honest with you, I probably demanded too much of my kids. And they'll tell you, no, we didn't. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, that's because they like I you. do sometimes. I wonder, you know, was I so tunnel visioned? Sure, sure. I think a lot of us think that way, Jerry. There was times I was kind of embarrassed the way I act yeah. as a coach. Yeah, I, no, yeah. I share that. Yeah. So here's Bogart in the gun. He throws off to the right side. He's got a man out there. Off to the 30. He's at the 25. He's at the 20. He's got one to beat. He gets down to the 5, and that's where he's taken down. Number 11, Braden Jordan, goes to the 5-yard line, and Bluffton looks to punch it in again. Big reception on the play. Brings up first and goal for the Pirates. Well, you know, I, I talk about them being, you know, they're an option-oriented team, but they generally run out of the pistol. And if you see right now kind of the difference between that the pistol offers, you'll see a sure. running back behind uh, Garrett Bogart. 
and that does give them a little bit more. You've got the wide outs. Sure. You've got the option to throw, but you also have that threat of a running back. And there's Worcester getting the ball, and he goes up the middle, and he is taken down immediately. So that will bring up second down. And I think I know, uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, the staff at uh, Spencerville knew who was getting the ball on that. Absolutely. Well, I heard Coach Richards today on the radio, and for a, for a team that's one and two, he was so pleasantly surprised with his kids and their work ethic, and and, you, and he sounded like a coach that was three and zero. Oh. And yes. I love that vibe from him, and uh, he he really feels good about his kids going forward. Yep. And I think he he's really recognizing they're young. Yeah, that he and, said that. Yes, absolutely. Know, growth. Yep. Just just get better every week. So here comes Bogart in the gun. He's got one to the right, um, excuse me, two to the right, one in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to the man in motion. He gets around the end. He's got two to beat, and he's going to be taken down there. Nice pursuit by yeah, number Bogart 13 the from the Bearcats, and that's Hayden Heyman. We've seen him all over the Hayden field tonight. Heyman. And that was a great job of, of you know, playing that, staying home. Uh, great defense by the Bearcats. And there you see Gavin Bogart, the brother of the quarterback, Garrett Bogart. So the Bogart brothers trying to... Punch it in the end zone for the Pirates. So we've got about 30 seconds to go here. And this is a big down for Bluffton, big down for Spencerville. Absolutely. Third Keep them out of the end zone. Third and two. Pirates trying to punch it in, take a two-score lead. Bogart's going to hand the ball off to Worcester, and he's going to be taken yep. down. And they're going to be stopped at about the goal line. Landon, Landon Wooster falls Wooster short, and that, Jerry, is going to bring an Kyle end Heckman. to the first quarter. So after one quarter from here at Bluffton High School, the Bluffton Pirates lead the Spencerville Bearcats 7 to nothing the on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Score score. We come back seven, for football action right here on Zero. WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. Where after one quarter, the Pirates lead the Spencer Bear at seven nothing, and they are on the doorstep, Jerry, of punching it again on the two yard yeah, line. Yeah, and I think this is such a critical, you know, stop on here, you know, because again, you're talking about momentum, you're talking about playing catch up at this point. There's Worcester with the ball. He's trying to get around the right side. He got a great block out there, and he's going to walk oh, into the end zone. And number four, Griffin Stackhouse, the wide receiver. The wide receivers don't get enough credit, Jerry. He made a huge block. And that's the second big block yes, he's he had. Yeah, he gets it. He gets yes, it. He that does. young man gets it. He is out there helping his teammates, and the Bluffton Pirates go up 13 to nothing with 11.54 to go before half. Well, you know something that uh, Coach Richards told me? He really commended that the number of kids that have gone out for track. Yes, I heard that. Did yes, you hear that? Yes. And Stackhouse is one of those. Um, Hayden Durth, he was a state qualifier last year in the long jump. Yes. Uh, Griffin Stackhouse, 100 meter uh, qualifier as a sophomore. Wow, and there's Basil's our guy, Kyle Basil, Blake Jerry. He knocks it through from everywhere. And Man, that makes it 14 to nothing 13, with 11.54 to go. Zero. Jerry, you've got to see several teams uh, in the last few weeks. Give me your uh, impressions of uh, high school football week four in the state of Ohio. Well, you know, there's Man, there are some really, really good teams. I really mean that. Anthony Wayne, I'm going to go up north yes, here for a little absolutely. bit. Anthony Wayne graduated so many people, but they're 3-0 and going into tonight. Perrysburg, I think, is very good. I uh, saw them last week against St. John's. It was a great game in overtime. Uh, actually, Perrysburg had no business winning <laughs> and somehow came back in overtime and won. Yeah. But uh, Finley's good. But, you know, Finley's got the tough part of their schedule early on. Well, so, we, yeah, we also talked about that. They lost a ton of skill Yes, players. they did. I mean, they lost Division II basketball players. They yes. lost Division One. I, I mean, they, they lost a lot. Yes, they did. And and uh, skilled players, you're right. You know, I think McComb's going to be better. I do. You know, I saw them in well, week Chris one. Correct, correct. Liberty Benton's good. Liberty Benton got a huge week two win against Columbus Grove. Yes, they did. Big matchup. So we're going to watch Kyle Basil here kick off again to Spencerville. Back deep for the Bearcats, Nate Coulter and Carter Lehman. Bearcats need to get something going here. Down 14 to nothing. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from Bluffton High School. Beautiful Friday night, week four of the Ohio high school football season. And they're going to elect to go to Nate Coulter. The senior wideout catches the ball at about the eight-yard line. He brings it up. He gets off to the other side. He's got one man to beat. And if he – oh, he almost got around him. He got to the 40-yard line. Basil and he got taken down, down by my man, Kyle yeah. Basil. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a kicker's dream, by the way. Absolutely. When they make that tackle, it'll be, hey, did you see this? Hey, did you see this? Well, we've got oh. it on tape, young man. 
And Bluffton's last touchdown was sponsored by Springfield Fireworks. And Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week from 9 to 8. Listen, of all the dreams I had as a little kid, it was growing up in a town with a fireworks store. These kids are <laughs> bluffed in. You beast. beat me to this because I was going to say, how how awesome. We've got somebody, a fireworks sponsor, you know. That's great. Here come the Bearcats. And here comes Henline in the gun. He gets it out to Carter Lehman off to the right side. He's in heavy pursuit. And, boy, a collision by number, number nine, Quinn Lehman by number nine. Quinn Eaches. Eaches, excuse me. Quinn Eaches came up in protection and said, I'm not backing down. And he hit Carter Lehman hard. Well, that's been key for their DBs and also, for, you know, for their linebackers. They're sending their inside linebackers almost every play. Yes, they are. To, to uh, Spencerville's to credit. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They're doing a good job of reading it, but they've got other people staying home making sure tackles. So here's Henline in the gun. He's going to go off to the other side. He's got a man out there, and he drops the ball. And that was number four, Grant Duty, the 6'190 pound senior. And boy, he had some grass in front of him. He obviously would have picked up the first down. And that's that classic overuse statement. He started to run before he, he caught did. it. You're but, right. No, you're absolutely right. But really, right. I mean, you know, that's. That's easy for us to diagnose up here, <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, you're, you're catching that ball and you know you're going to get hit. Absolutely. Well, he had a little running room. And I like how Henline is finding the holes in the seam with the linebackers rushing up. He's got the middle of the field open, so he knows where to go with the ball. Henline's in the gun. He's got Carter Lehman to his left. He's got two to the right. He's got two to the left. He looks across to Coach Summers for the play, looks at his wristband. And the, that's, that's a big advantage being in the – a shotgun like that is being able to see the field, see what's open. Yep, he's going to take a timeout. That'll give us a chance to take a timeout. With 11.03 to go, the Bluffton Pirates lead 14 to nothing. You're watching high school football on WOS. Back here at Bluffton High School with 11.03 to go. Bearcats down 14 to nothing to the Bluffton Pirates. Here comes Henline. He looks across the middle. He's got Nate Colder in the flat. Nate Colder's being pursued by the Pirates, and he's going to be just short of a first down. Henline's pass complete to Nate Colder, number two. About two to three yards Run short of the first 21. down, so that'll bring up another Gavin fourth Bogart down. Jerry, are you, and, and, and this is a no knock on the Pirates, but I am just blown away by their speed and their so athleticism on defense. I mean, yep. they're, they're flying to the ball. Yep. They're, they're linebackers. I, you know, you play a th you run a 3-4 defense, yes. and your linebackers have to be good and solid, and they are. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So. Worcester, I can see why he had 100 <laughs> tackles last year as a freshman. So they're going to go for it on fourth and two. Here comes Henline in the gun. There it comes. He's going to fake the handoff and go across the middle. And he's got his man, and he's on the flat. And you're going to get, uh, look like to me, a holding penalty out here. But he's going to take it into the end zone. Grant Duty is going to take it into the end zone. And, Jerry, the Bluffton folks are upset. You saw it. I saw it. It was a clear holding penalty. I thought so, yeah. yeah. But nonetheless, the Spencerville Bearcats are on the board, 14-6. But, boy, do I give them credit. Absolutely. Uh, they saw the blitz. They saw it. And, boy, they capitalized. That's a key touchdown. And, and look, folks at home, I have no fight in the dog, or no dog in the fight. But uh, that, that was a, uh, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> we'll call it that. 14-6, to 10-11 to go here in the second quarter. The Bearcats are on the board. They look to make it a 14-7 game. It's number 17, Emerson Lehman, tries to put the extra point on. He puts it up, and it knocks the upright, but it does Got go through. in. 10-11 so mark in the second quarter. The Bearcats have closed the gap, and they made it 14-7. You're watching high school football right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School, where the Bearcats have made it a 14 to 7 game. And Jerry, I don't want to say they really needed that, but boy, they really needed that. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. That was, you know, big, big difference. You're right back in the game. That's a big mental uh, lift for those guys, too. Well, I like what you said earlier about quarterback Josh Henline. He was finding the open seams and did a great job on fourth down of finding the open guy, and he did the rest. So, great job. You know, and that's the other thing about, you know, uh, playing a, a wide open offense like that you know their receivers great hands you know th those you know people love to play that you know sure. you're going to get your good athletes you know and they'll say hey once in a while i'll get hit yeah you know what i mean why not absolutely so nice deep kick there he fielded at the five yard line bringing across the 30 yard line and it's where he's hit about the 34 yard line that was number 10 for the pirates noah bricker 
5'11 sophomore. Return, down by number and that's where Isaac Bogart and crew will set shop up the as they try to take a two-score lead here, leading 14-7 to with 10.05 to go. And that was a great solid tackle by Isaac Kill on that. Boy, he just stopped him dead in his tracks. So another Springfield Fireworks touchdowns in the book. Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks in Albany Adams. Open seven days a week from 9 to 8. Now I'm expecting, now even though that was the Bearcats, yeah. I'm expecting as darkness falls here and if Bluffton scores, I'm, 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 I'll silently cheer for Bluffton to score once it's dark. I'm fireworks. expecting fireworks. <laughs> let's go, let's go Springfield Fireworks. Uh, <laughs> there's land. Oh, they fake oh. the hand off the booster. They go back out to Bogart on the left side. He's going across the five yard line, or the five yard pickup and he gets about 11 there, but they're gonna bring that one back. Yeah, they're gonna call yeah, hold out there on the right side. That had great job that time by Spencerville staying home. Faked us out, I thought he'd fake them out, but did Absolutely. a great job of staying home on that option. So Spencerville comes back, they get the score, and then the first play after the score, they get a holding penalty on Bluffton, so momentum may be changing a little bit here if you're a Bearcat fan. Looks like holding. Our timeout sponsor tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial on Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Metzger play. Financial Services, our timeout sponsor. And so there's the holding penalty on the Pirates. That'll take the ball back to the 30-yard line. Uh, That'll be first and 15 from the 30. And that's where quarterback Garrett Bogart will take over. Four touchdowns on the season, one interception. He's a game manager, as Coach says. Yep. So I like that term. They let him do what he can do, and they don't ask him anymore. So he's in the gun. He's got three to the right, one to the left. He's going to go up the left sideline. He's got a man out there, and he overthrows him. He had number Bogart's 11 out intended there, for intended for Braden seven, Jordan. Number 11, Braden Jordan. Well, he did show us he has an arm, too. Yeah, absolutely. He Good distance on that. He did a long way there. And Braden Jordan was being really held tight down the sideline. Great coverage. And that man in coverage for the Bearcats was number 10, Dylan Short. And, and for a DB at 6'1", that's a, that's a great lot. Yes, it is. Size. Good speed. I, he absolutely. stayed right with him. He did. And it looked to me like Bogart was on the sideline, so I don't know if he'd have caught it, if he would have you know, right. been able to make that reception there, being out of bounds and all. So here comes Bogart in the gun. He's got three to the right. He's going to go off to his right side. He's got his brother out there. Bogart makes man, man missed. He gets to the 40. He's at the 50. He's going down the sideline. He's going to go at the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Pirates. That's another Springfield Fireworks touchdown. You know, and as emotional as the last touchdown was by Spencerville, this is one that kind of breaks your back, but also if you're Bluffton, you're right back where you want to be. Absolutely. So Garrett Bogart gets the ball out to his brother, and his brother takes it all the way in for a touchdown. And I thought, I really thought Spencerville snuffed that out well, but another great block, you know, on the outside. So Gavin Bogart stretches his legs and show you why he's one of the best Kyle athletes Basel on this team. Here comes Kyle Basil as he tries to make it a 21 to seven lead with 9.29 to go here. Snap is back, Basel's good, and Basil's is kick good. is good. So with 9.29 to go, the Pirates lead 21 to seven. Watching high school football right here on WOSN. Back here at Bluffton High School with 9.29 to go. The Pirates score again to make it 21 to seven. So Jerry, last weekend we got to see the Buckeyes come out and play Notre Dame, big game. Your thoughts on the big game in the shoe Saturday night? Well, you know, I kind of look from the perspective that I see all these complaints and <laughs> criticism that- well, of course. They, you know, they only won by whatever, you know, <laughs> slow start. Wait a minute, you are sort of playing the number the fifth ranked now, <laughs> team in the nation. The what, have, what have we turned this into, you know? Jerry, I, you know, that's the one thing about you. You're, you're level-headed and you think things through. Why <laughs> can't minute. you just be out of control here? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, while we're waiting on this kickoff, uh, I always love to take the opportunity to thank the two athletic directors. Oh, Ke absolutely. Kelly Williams, Alex Hanna. People don't realize what it takes to put, and there's one out of the end zone. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. people don't realize, you know, what what they do. I, I, you know, they're they are the unsung heroes of all this, and and I say that from the standpoint when the ball is kicked off, they just kind of shake their head and like, 
it all oh, came yeah, together. Yeah, yep. yeah. And, so, and, and as you say that, you know, Alex Hanna came yeah. up, talked to you and I, shook our hands. Well, at, what, what do you guys need? What can we make this better right. for you? I mean, that's just first class, and this is a beautiful facility. They got here, and oh, we, we made fun of that grass growing a little bit, but uh, the field's in great shape. I think that's and, on uh, purpose. Absolutely, well, I, I think you're right. But uh, so Spencerville is going to take over from the 20 yard line. First and 10, 9.29 to go here. Henline's in the gun. He's got a back to his right, to his left. He's going to look across the field under pressure. Throws across the middle. He's got Coulter out there, and that's going to be close to a first down. So they are really going after that middle. They're watching those linebackers come up a little bit, and they're taking advantage of that yeah. space. Yeah. Great, great job coaching by Coach Chris Summers. You know, seeing you know seeing that from up above, that they're sending linebackers every time. You know, they're going to make them stay home sooner or later. Absolutely. You're going to see Coulter go up more and more across the middle if those linebackers continue to do that. So it's a chess match right now. Yes, we'll it see is. those adjustments made at halftime. So here comes Henline in the gun. He's got a single setback. He's going to throw off to the right side. He's got Colder again. He breaks a tackle. He gets across the 40 to the 44-yard line. To number two, Nate Coulter, and that down is by a 17. Charles River Nate first down. Cam Coughlin Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. You know, they're just kind of Dink and dunk right now, yeah. trying to get those, and you'll watch them probably go along here in a little bit. And you heard Chris Summers earlier this season talk about Nate Holder, uh, you know, relinquishing that role of quarterback so Henline can play quarterback, and that's a teammate. I'm telling you, that that's an unsung hero right there. So here's Henline; he's going to keep it himself. He goes up for about Headline four yards, but Nate Holder did a really good job. This was his team last year, and he gave Landon up that Wilker. position, and and he's really well thriving in the wide receiver Preston spot. Cole yeah, you're right, and I, you know, as much seven. as you credit the two kids for that. You're right. Leadership, I mean, you know, that's real teamwork and sure. teammates. But, you know, coaches in their counseling and their, sure. and their leadership roles, too, I uh, give them a lot of credit for that. Absolutely. They make it about the team. Second and five for the 48. Henline goes off to the right side. He's got Colder again, and Colder three throws in a row, and he is really exposing that left and secondary right now, just taking it, like you said, Jerry, two and three yards a pop, and that's okay right now. Gives him a third and one, third and short. A little short of the first down, brought down by number 11, Braden Jordan, number 27, Landon Wilson. I think when we were talking about the, you know, the teammates and the, you know, all the, the team togetherness and all that, I guess what we're really saying is, what a value of high school sports right. to teach all that. Exactly. You know? and, exactly. And what a role coaches play in it. You sound like you've been involved in high school sports. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Henline. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to go up the middle. A nice gain. He's going to pick up another Headline Charles again, River first down. down. So nine, it is a just. consummate drive here by the Bearcats. They're taking their time three and four yards Brings at a time, a but they're making that Bluffton defense work. And great the, play calling. I think it's just great play calling. I think you're right. right Absolutely. Well, look, Chris Summers has been doing this yep. a long time. He's, he's not going to go down without a fight. So, you know, big league rivalry here, and I heard him earlier this week talk about how intense this game is every year regardless of the records. And that's something you can say about the Northwest Conference, I think. You know, so, oh, yeah. so much parity. You know what I mean? That You don't see one team. Yeah, you got a good team now and then, but, you know, you do. But yeah. for the most part, anybody could beat anybody. Absolutely, and here's Henline as he rolls off to his left. He's going to turn back around. He's going to go up the middle of the field. He's got some yard in front of him, and he's going to be taken down about three yards short of first down. And you mentioned Josh that, Jerry, Henline and you look at the depth in the conference, nine, and boy, did they go out others. and get a great member in Lipsick last year to add more depth in every sport. Just yeah, and you know, down. we could use the crystal ball and say – what's going to happen with league alignments in a lot of different places down the road. You know, sure. Liberty Benton leaving the BBC. You know, there's there's Find always a, a ripple. The yes, City yes. Yeah. There always ripple effects. Who would have thought USC and UCLA being the Big Ten? When I, when I was yeah, a kid, right, I right. never would have thought of that. So here's Henline. He's going to hand the ball off. He goes up almost to the first down. He bounces around, and he gets another Charles River first down. Talk about some hard running. Reggie Jones, number 20, the 5'9 freshman, Jones, Jerry, the freshman. Wow. The and I had not Bears. had a lot on my scouting report about Reggie Jones, but Reggie Jones right now looks legit. Yes, he does. 5'9", 165-pound freshman on my Score sheet here. So here's Henline in the gun. He's got Jones behind him. He's got one to his right in Coulter. He's going to hand the ball off to Jones again. Jones goes across the 30-yard line. Boy, he was hit hard and knocked back to the original line of scrimmage. Reggie Jones again on the carry. It's like we, he did that the first time. Let's see what <laughs> he can do the second time. 
Our scoreboard sponsor tonight right is Webb Insurance Agency right serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from Bluffton High School. The sun has went down, but the temperatures are still nice and warm here. Yeah, and we're in week four. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's right. We're in week four. That's right. Here's Henline of the gun. He's going to throw the ball out to Duty on the right side. Duty goes across the 25, gets about the 24. Pass and that's where he'll get stopped. Four, and that'll bring up third Duty. in about five yards. Yeah, third and medium right now, you know, maybe four yards, something like that. And, and I think with Chris Summers being in his uh, in this uh, spread offense, if you can go third and five and less every time, you got to be happy that you can make that a manageable third down. Yes, and I would say that they're probably in four-down territory right now. Too, Absolutely. So, yes, so he knows that. From the We've got two to Two downs to make five yards. Yes. So 5.06 to go. Bearcats down 21 to 7 to the Bluffton Pirates. They're on the move at the 24 yard line. This is Henline with Jones in the backfield. Henline under big pressure, and he is taken down. Number 27, Landon Wooster, Jerry. And he come out of there like he was shot out yes, of the cannon. Did. And I think he saw that right before the snap. <laughs> like, uh oh, everybody's Mac coming. Everybody here, if you order, order a Big Mac on the McDonald's app tomorrow. They're giving away free Big Macs. Saturday, too. September 10th. <laughs> why, why are we not getting free Big Macs? Yes. We'll probably get free fireworks. <laughs> but you got to order from the app. Uh, look, if, if that's Alex Hanna doing those uh, announcing, he's doing a great job. He's entertaining, too. <laughs> Here's Hanna lining the gun. He's got Jones to his right, two to the left, two to the right. He looks across the field, steps up in the pocket, throws deep down the right side. He's got a man wide open. And that is another Springfield Fireworks touchdown. Dylan Short, the 6'1 sophomore. And, Jerry, he was wide open. Not only wide open, but I will tell you, Josh Henline, he oh. is impressive. Yeah. You know, he just – he was under pressure, took his time, and, boy, you love to see that. In and, that and that's why he was opened up. That's why he was so sure. open. Because I think the defense thought he was eventually going to tuck it and go. Yeah, I love the fact how he steps up in the pocket when he feels the pressure. Found his man down the right side, and he strikes one from about 30 yards out. So they'll try to tackle on the extra point. This is Emerson Lehman. He's got one of the books already, and he's got another one. That one's a whole lot better. No yes. banging off the uh, side post there. So with the 412 mark until halftime, Spencerville Bearcats have narrowed the lead to 21 to 14 right here on WOSN. Back here at Bluffton High School at 4.12 to go. Pirates lead 21-14. And we we're watching Coach Richards on the sideline, Jerry. And he was upset with some of the officiating. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, it's the second time that after uh, Spencerville has scored, uh, I don't know about the first one. but the, Yeah, they, say, yeah, they did the same yeah, thing. They went over right. and huddled Both up. Both touchdowns, they huddled up on the sideline. And Bluffton's out ready. They're ready to yes. play. And there was yeah, I've no not emotion seen, to get I've him not out seen there. that from anybody this year. Right. So maybe Spencerville's got uh, something figured out here. But uh, it is 21 to 14. They're going to kick off deep to the Pirates. This is number four for the Pirates as he takes it about the three-yard line. Griffin Stackhouse. He's going to go up the right side. He gets to the corner. He's got some grass in front of him. He's being pursued by the kicker, and he is taken down by number 17, Emerson Lehman, and Nate Colter was there in support. So a great return, Jerry. It's going to give him the ball on the other side of the 50. Yeah, great return, but one of the things on, on a couple of those, and one of the long runs a, little, a while ago, you know, the pursuit angles just were not very good yep. by Spencerville. You know, they're they're not realizing the speed that Bluffton has sure. and taking bad pursuit angles and then get outran. So, Jerry, we saw Spencerville struggle a little bit in the first quarter, but it's almost like they figured out what they need to do. And, boy, their offense is really clicking right now. Down seven, but that was from the miscues earlier in the game. Yeah, and I think that's just a great job offensively from the coaching staff of seeing what's being given to them. They're taking advantage That's of those, great those uh, blitzes and the linebackers coming. That's a great point. If we can get three or four yards a time, we'll get three or four yards a time and spring one. And that's exactly what they've done. So here's Bogart in the gun. He's got number 27, Landon Wooster, off to his left. He's got two to his right, goes off to Wooster in the backfield. He was almost taken down way in the backfield. He's going to get away. He's going to get across the first down marker. He's going to get to the 20 and take him down to the 15. So Landon Wooster went from taking a loss in the backfield to taking it up to the five-yard line. Yeah, I wonder what kind of if he's going to be tired in the fourth quarter. Because, you think so? And I know. No, he's not. I mean, they have time between, but uh, and they'll rest him occasionally too. But boy, is he contributed right now? 
and he's playing both sides of the yes. ball, and he's playing both sides of the ball. Hard. <laughs> you know, if you got a kid like that, Jerry, and let's just say he goes to a Finley where they don't have to play both sides of the ball, where do you play a kid like that? I mean, right. You, I mean, he's – I mean, I know where you're playing, but you have to make a decision, offense, defense. But even there, you know, it's amazing sometimes with good – and he's coming off the field right now. So it's amazing sometimes, though, athletes like that, they may play in college at a position they're yes. not even playing right. in high school. Right, Because, you know, they're being dra – or not drafted, but uh, – Signed with NIL, signed but, with NIL. No, but they're being they're being recruited sure. because they're great athletes and can do about anything. Well, look, I, you know, I, I don't mean to you know put a label on anybody right now, but Landon Wooster right now is as good a linebacker as I've seen in the last yes, four yeah, weeks. Yes, he too. really is. He really is. So Bogart kind of shuffle throws it out there to number four as he gets around the end and he's taken down by Josh Henline right about the goal line Griffin Stackhouse, and Griffin Stackhouse. I don't know if it was a a, a shuffle pass or what do you want to call that? I, I, I believe that. <laughs> One and the one before both right. were behind the line of scrimmage, yes. so they were both, you know, uh, laterals. laterals or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. So here come the Pirates with 3:45 to go, knocking on the doorstep again, and that offensive line is really churning out the yards for Bogart and crew. And you know they're in scoring position right now. Obviously, if they score here, it's like every time Spencerville has done something, Bluffton has been able to come back. We may see we may see a lot of fireworks. I, I said earlier on a, on a radio show where I was uh, getting asked about the the high school sports, and I said, well, I don't know if it's going to be a shootout or. And Bogart looks like Bogart goes across touchdown. the goal line for another Pirate. Bluffton Pirate touchdown. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Springfield Fireworks, and Bluffton is your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week from 9 to 8. Well, you know, if you do look at statistics, you would say we're going to have a shootout. Sure, you know? So, sure. you know, I guess it's pretty much holding to be true right now. I, I just, sometimes I just say things to uh, <laughs> <laughs> think maybe, maybe I'm not as smart as I want to be. So the Pirates go up again, 27 to 14. Here comes Kyle Basil to try to knock it through the uprights to give the Pirates a 14 point lead. And yes, he does. With 3.11 to go, the Bluffton Pirates lead the Spencerville Bearcats 28 to 14. When we come back, we'll have the end of the first half right here on WOSN. Seventeen to go from Bluffton High School. Standing Pirates lead the Spencerville Bearcats twenty-eight to fourteen. And we are watching a lot of Springfield fireworks touchdowns tonight here, Jerry. As both offenses have got it cranked up. And look, there's three seventeen to go. Spencer was going to get the ball back, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see another one on the board. I wouldn't either. And you know, very entertaining game. Oh, but that almost took a bounce. That <laughs> you saw the same thing. You're right. It almost stayed right on the one-two yeah. yard line. But you know, for the fans, a very entertaining game. A nice crowd on hand tonight. The home side pretty much full. The uh, visiting side, the Spencerville Bearcats, about three quarters full, but we got a lot of kids out in the uh, infield. And uh, you know, you you say that about you know we do. We have good fans. Spencerville brought a good crowd, and you know, I mean, you look around, good good crowd. But I often think about like what a distant memory it was when we couldn't come to games. Yeah, you're you know, right. What a distant nope. memory when you had to tape off the bleachers. I'm surprised every athletic director didn't quit then. <laughs> I mean, you know, come out and how are we going to do that? You know, keep people six feet apart and only sell X number of tickets. Yeah. They did it. We, they did it. And I remember it was so strange going into football facilities or gyms and, and doing it in, in, with empty crowds. And that, yes. That was yes. just, it was hard. I, isn't that hard to believe yeah. that that was like that? Yeah, I mean, it was. We, we, you know, and I, we've come a long way yeah. in the last couple of years. And I sure have a lot of stories about it. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes Headline. He's got Jones in the backfield with him. He's going to roll right. He's going to look down the sideline, and he's picked off. And it's taken by number nine from the Bluffton Pirates, Quinn Eaches, as he picks it off. He had Nate Colter running down the side, and he just short-armed it, Jerry. And he had him. I mean, he, he had him. If he would have given him another two steps, he'd be off and running. Absolutely. He had him wide open. And now now with 3.10 to go, you got to believe that Coach Richards is going to lean on that offensive line to take some time off and punch it in yep, again. Yep, I mean, he, he, I, I, depending upon what he says, but this touchdown, they need it so bad. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So that's the first big mistake of the night by the Bearcats as Josh Henline is picked off. He's got uh, three of those, now four on the season, interceptions that is. And that was each just on the reception there. And did a great job of catching the ball in bounds. Yes, he and did. Tab both, or both feet down. 
Looked like an NFL DB back there. You know, and, and that's the other thing analytics won't tell you. You know, I mean, like, you, you don't know when that interception is going right. to take place. You just don't. Yep. Here comes Bogart as he throws out to his brother, number 21, Garrett, Garrett Bogart. Bogart. They're really trying to hit that little swing pass, you know, quite a bit. I think trying to lull Spencerville asleep and then go deep with it. Absolutely. Let's see what they do here on second and 13 as they lose three yards on that play. 2.45 to go here. Pirates lead 28-14. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from Bluffton High School. On a beautiful Friday night. We can't say fall Friday night. No, we it's can't. It's not really fall. It's, it was 81 when we kicked <laughs> off. <laughs> Here's Bogart as he hands the ball off. Goes across the 40, gets it out to the 35. That's number 27, Landon, Landon Wooster. Wooster. Boy, he runs Brought hard, Jerry. He does. Tough yards. You know, we've been blessed these first four weeks, you know, in northern Ohio at least with good weather. We have. I mean, it's yes, solid yeah. weather. Athletic directors love it because they have good gate receipts. But uh, it's been beautiful weather every every week. Absolutely. I like that nice warm weather. Concessions are flowing then. Yep. <clears throat> so Garrett Bogart. Leads his Pirates across the 40-yard line to the 35. He's got number 27 in the backfield, Landon Wooster. He's got three trips to his left. He's looking across the left side, goes to the middle. He's got a man out there. He goes across the 25. He takes a hit, tries to avoid it. Goes to about the 23-yard line, number four, Griffin Stackhouse. And boy, Griffin Stackhouse is playing a huge role tonight for the Pirates. You know, Stackhouse coming into this game in their first three games, he was averaging just a, uh, just a little over 26 yards per game <laughs> on receiving. Yeah. Well, he's we've seen him do some excellent blocking tonight. Oh, my goodness. He is an all-around great player here for the Pirates. So here's Bogart, throws off to his left. He's got Stackhouse out there again. And he's taken down about a gain of four yards. And they're probably going to utilize one of their timeouts here pretty quick. 122 to go, and they're in the hurry up here, trying to get to the line of scrimmage. Bogart's corralling his troops. He's got Wooster in the backfield with him. He's got two to the left. He's got two out wide. He's got number 17, Hayden Durth, to the far right side. 105 to go here until halftime. And using a lot of clock. Yes, they are. Yes, absolutely. I got to believe you're right, Jerry. They're going to have to use a timeout here. Yeah. And I'm not real sure why yeah. we're timeout. taking that time. 54.9 seconds to go. Bluffton here, 28-14. Yeah, it's 14. not like you're worried about giving the ball back. You know, I, sure. maybe you are, but. Well, maybe this is why I'm in the booth. And yeah, Coach Richards that's exactly is down right. there and uh, go from there. So, so big big game tomorrow for the Buckeyes. They've got Arkansas State. Uh, I don't. I shouldn't yeah. say big sure, game. Sure like I'm trying to sell it. after Arkansas. <laughs> yes, it's not the Hogs. It is the Red Wolves. Now, look, they've got a uh, Division I quarterback in James tomorrow, Blackman who transferred from Florida team State. Team uh, they had the worst defense in NCAA Division I Division football, football out last out year, but besides out that, out <laughs> I, I read somewhere last week, I wish I could remember the numbers, but the number of players that entered the transfer portal in Division One and how many started yeah. in games last week. And it, it was, there were a lot that didn't. There were a lot of people that didn't. Look, you're, you're old school, a lot like I am. We think a lot alike. What, what's your thoughts on the transfer Monday, portal? For me, it's just it's Tamarack. just craziness. It, it's free I love for, Yeah, I love for kids to get the opportunity, but my goodness, what are we doing? Uh, but, but you really look at it today, too, and, you know, from the high school kid's standpoint, you're like, hey, if I don't play, I'm just going to go somewhere yeah, else. I mean, right. what, what does that do in your recruiting? Yeah. I no adversity there. So here comes Bogart. He's going to roll off to his right side. He's got blockers out in front of him. He's looking downfield. He throws it and out of bounds, and he had a man out there. It looked like he had number 11 out there, Braden Jordan, yeah, and it just goes off the defender. And that will bring up third and nine. I like the play call, Jerry, because the ball is either going to be caught or Correct. out of bounds. Correct, or out of bounds. Right. Don't have to use that side. You know, we go back to that, you know, the transfer portal yes. and everything, but I guess theoretically you would say that many – it opens the door to other teams – being good, and maybe that's why they went to 12 teams in the playoffs. But, uh, you know, because if I mean, look at Joe Burrow. I mean, you know, transfer, didn't get a chance to play at Ohio State, and but go but somewhere. For every Joe Burrow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's why I said the yeah. statistics that showed how many entered the transfer portal that did yeah. not start last week. So Bogart's going to keep it himself. He's got the whole middle of the field, and he's going to take it in. Garrett Bogart from 20 yards out, and a fantastic job of recognizing what the defense gave him. Yeah, Jerry. and I wonder. I don't know if that was a, a I, I designed know, right, right. quarterback draw or not. Couldn't really tell. I'd have to see it again to really tell. 
But uh, it looked like it might have been. You know, he took right. the steps back and didn't spend a lot of time looking the field over. So Garrett Bogart takes it in from 20 out, and that's another Springfield Fireworks touchdown. So with 41 seconds to go, the Pirates take the 34-14 lead. Basil will try to make it 35 with this kick. He's been successful on all of his PATs tonight. Snap is back, hold is good, and the kick is Kyle no, no, the kid is off no the left marker. And uh, wow, a rare miss from Kyle yeah. Basil. It looked good from our angle. I sure thought it was did. through, you know. Fourth I thought it was downtown like the rest of the kicks and uh, hit the upright. Well, you know, Jerry, we see so many kids, as you said, the Joe Burrows of the world who go off and have success, and everybody has that mantra that, well, if he can do it, so can I. And, you know, he had to find the right fit. He had to find the right school. And, unfortunately for him, he went to a great program where they let him, you know, do what he could do best. Now, look, that first year Joe Burrow was in LSU, he was an average quarterback. That's exactly He was right. an average quarterback. And he stayed there, and he, and he did some good things and played for some great coaches. But, look, his coach lost his job right after Joe left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, you do. You look at the Joe Burrows and say, that is the reason why the transfer portal exists. Well, well, you know, yes and no. Again, like you said, look at the other ones, you know, that didn't. I, look, when I was a kid, I, I, I liked the Big Ten being the Big Ten. I liked the Pac-10 being the Pac-10. Yes. I liked the Big 12 being the Big 12. The and I'm just having a hard time with all the change. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not yeah. saying it's bad. I just, I, uh, I'm just, not good with change. I'm not sure I can watch a Big Ten game at 1030 at night that kicks <laughs> off, you know, on the West Coast. Yeah, you're right. I'm not sure the Rutgers Southern Cal game will will be a fan favorite. And if you're a USC guy, I bet you can't wait for that November yeah. game in Minneapolis. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So here come the Pirates, and Basil, uh, Basil, excuse me, will try to kick off here from the 40-yard line, 41 seconds to go. This is Nate Coulter, and he's going to let it go over his head, and that was Basil really deep in the end, zone. Into the end zone. So the Bearcats will try to from the 20. Uh, down 34-14. Jerry, do you see the Bearcats trying to put something together here? Do you see him taking a knee? I think they'll the take locker? a knee. I think they'll just let – I, I, I should remember, and I can't remember who gets the second half Tuesday, kickoff. But, um, I believe uh, I believe Bluffton does. I think they do. The team will host Van Buren in the Dominic Francis Memorial Soccer Game at 5.30, the reserve volleyball 34 team first half points, pretty impressive. Also Absolutely. The offense the was clicking on all cylinders here for Cat. the first half. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So here comes. They may try one play here, and I, I think. I was going to say, uh, Henline's in the gun. He's got him yep. spread out. He's going to try one. He looks across the middle, finds Nate Coulter, and he just drops the ball with 37 seconds to go, and that'll bring up second and 10 from the 20. I like what they try to do. They try to get Coulter and those yep. wideouts in space and let him create a little bit. But the Henline's got to hold that ball just a tad longer. I said I've been very impressed by him. No, you absolutely. Know, and at that. the same time, you know, when you're down 34-14, that plays on you a little bit. So Henline's in the gun. He's got Jones to his left. Snap almost goes over his head, and he bobbled it. It's going to be picked up by Bluffton. And, Jerry, there's 32 seconds to go. They've got the ball at the 19-yard line. This could get ugly here in the first half. And I don't mean that in a bad way. No. But and, yeah, go ahead. And I go back, and, you know, Bluffton did not use their timeouts in that other possession. Now they've got them. Well, and, and I'm sure that Coach Summer's going to be questioned, why didn't you take the knee down deep? Yeah. But he's just trying to get, no, you know, he's trying exactly to get his kids right. in a great position. I don't fault him at all. I that. don't one bit. So here come the Pirates with 32 seconds to go, up 34-14, looking to put the ball in the end zone. And I can assure you they're not going to take a knee. No, they're not. They are. You're right. So Bogart's in the gun. He's got Landon Wooster off to the left. He's got three to the left. He looks across, throws the ball to the right side. He's got a man in the middle of the field, and he scores. And that's a Springfield firework touchdown. Number 17, Hayden Durth. And just like that, the Pirates go up 40-14. to well, Jerry, that's the turnover bug. That's two of them since Spencerville tonight. And on both turnovers, the Bluffton Pirates yes. cash it in. And, you know, that one's a Hayden Dirth, I believe it was. And, boy, just like that, you know, you, you're, he's spreading the ball around to everybody. Everybody's getting the chance. A great job of cashing the in there. So here comes Basil as he tries to knock in the extra point. Snap is back, hold is good, and it's good. He goes right down the middle. No, it was no good. Oh, no good. I tell you, our angle. Uh, you're right, Jerry. <laughs> I, I would have told you that was the good, too. Is no good. Wow. I, I, I was for sure that was good, but, yeah, 40. we'll go from there. <laughs> so that's two in a row missed by Basil, but uh, – 
Pirates are in firm command of this one at 40 to 14 with 27 seconds to go. And every now and then you see that turnover bug and, and great teams capitalize. Yes, they, they do. Get those balls. Well, you know, and that was one of the big keys by Coach Richards, you know. And, and almost every week I hear the coach say, you've got to win the turnover battle. You know, and, and again, that's one of those things you just cannot script. When is there going to be a turnover? When is, when is there going to be an interception? You don't know that. So you've got to capitalize on that. Jerry, you spent a lot of time coaching, a lot of time going into the locker room at halftime. Well, what do you say to your kids down 40 to 14? I know, Look, you can scream, you can yell, you can be that demonstrative guy, but it's got to do you no good in a situation like this. Am I correct? Well, you know, I used to say as a coach, you know, I also have a, my, my master's is in guidance and counseling. And I said that favored me more than probably any other thing that I had. But I think that's, that brings out the best in a coach is, you know, they've got to keep their spirits up. They're not going to belittle the kids. They're not gonna they're just not let's go out and let's now improve you can't tell them we're beaten no you can't tell not. them no, that no, and you're not going to yeah. but let's let's improve every every single uh series and i think that's the the real focus at halftime and you know you come out as strong as you can and go on to another week and just take it and, and it's such a cliche but you just take it possession by possession yes you do all you can do so a little short squib kick there by the pirates and it's picked up by the up man it's number 26, Carter Lehman, as he at the 17-yard line. line. So 23 seconds to go. Pirates lead 40 to 14, 14, which was once a 21 to 14 50, game. It's now turned winner. into a 40 14 game. Courtesy of a couple turnovers. And the Pirates are firmly in control of this one with 23 That's seconds to go. 50, 50, yeah, and I talked earlier about, you know, 34 points and a half is pretty impressive. Let me X that out and say 40 points and a half is pretty impressive. <laughs> it's real impressive, Jerry. I don't care who you are, where you're from. And again, it's a conference game. These, and I'm telling you right now that the Bearcats are not that bad of a team. No, they're, not. they're just no, not. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So this is a lot of breaks. The gun. They're going to hand the ball off to Carter Lehman. And that play will probably do it as he goes across the 25-yard line for a gain of Marco about three. Iden. And they're going to let the Excuse clock run down here. Iden. So after one half from Bluffton High School, the Bluffton Pirates take a 40 to 14 and lead the first into half the half. When we come back, we'll have second half action Spencer watching high school football Bell right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School for the second half kickoff here. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass here on WOSN. The Bluffton Pirates rolling right now at halftime, 40 to 14. And, and Jerry, as uh, Spencerville gets ready to kick off the Bluffton, we talked before the half about Spencerville, what you could possibly tell your kids. If you're Bluffton up 40-14, what's your message to your young team? Don't stop. I right. mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what you don't want to see if you have a lead like this. You don't want to see the let up because that carries over to the next game. And it's not, it has nothing to do with running up the score. Sure. Oh, no, absolutely it's not. It's just like play every play, every position, give your 100%. Well, look, it's 40 to 14, and if I'm bluffed, and if I can get that running clock invoked, that shortens this game up. You don't have the injuries. You get your kids off there. Now, you want to get your younger kids some playing time, and hopefully we'll see that tonight from both squads. But uh, there's some lessons to be learned here in a 40 to 14 game. Yeah, and you also see those younger kids playing. No, don't score. Don't <laughs> score. We're <laughs> doing in. We don't want to shorten clocks. Oh, Web Insurance Agency serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton is our scoreboard sponsor tonight. So thank you to Web Insurance for being that scoreboard sponsor. We've got a lot of scoreboard use tonight. And our uh, touchdown sponsor, Jerry, likes to say he wants to see those fireworks it's from the Springfield now, Fireworks. So You're right. We should. Okay. That's right. No sun in our eyes. We want to get the glare of the fireworks from the Springfield Fireworks Company. So we are just about underway Emerson here. Lehman Emerson Lehman will fence. kick it deep to Bluffton. They'll let that one go into the end zone. Boy, oh, we've had two very good kickers. We have. You're okay. absolutely right. Really good kickers. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So the special teams playing a big factor here in the game tonight. So I like the setting here at Bluffton. They've got a, a nice setting here with the trees in the background and uh, done a lot of work here. And it's a nice crown field and yep. just a nice facility here. Alex Hannon and his staff, they do a fabulous job over here at Bluffton High School. We've been treated like kings tonight. You know, one of the things I look at too, Danny, is I, I see around and, you know, kids always have their little uh, play area. Yes, and yes, I saw that's right. A school in, in down south, it was yes. outside of Ohio. 
put in a separate little field in there. For the kids to play ball? Then yeah. again, I'm also thinking, oh, boy, is that a legal disaster <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> so here's Bogart for the Pirates. He's going to roll around to the right. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to pick up about four Here's yards as he's taken down. down. Number 26, Got number Carter, 26 Layman. Carter Lehman on the tackle. And that's the other and thing, if you're 50, bluffing right now, you Dylan a lot Cook, of times can work on game. other things, you sure. know, execution. But also, when you talk about those younger kids playing, you don't have to put 11 in at the same time. You can put, you know, a lineman in here and there, a receiver here and there. Give them some time, and that time is valuable. It's, it's, you're absolutely right. It is crucial to the development of programs. And a lot of times, and not, in, not, not that we see it a lot in Northwest Ohio, but we have those stories of, you know, kids just standing over there not getting that time. And I don't think we're going to see that tonight. I think we're going to see both these coaches do that. So there's a throw out into the flat. This is number 21 for the Bluffton Gavin Pirates, Bogart. Gavin Push Bogart, the, the brother of the quarterback Garrett Bogart. So the Bogart number connection 13, continues. Diamond and number 10, Dylan Short. And they've executed very well on offense. Yep. I mean, you know, you look at they've they've done a good job of mixing the run and the pass, and the as a result of that, have done a very good job of executing them. And that is our first Charles River first down. Charles River in Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So we have an injury on the far side. Uh, and I can't really, can you tell, Jerry, if it's a it's pirate a, or a bear cat? I believe it's a bear cat. Okay, Spencer, one of the Spencerville players. So they're going to tend to him on the field. We'll take our first time out here in the second half. You're watching high school sports on WOSC. Welcome back to Bluffton High School, where the injured player was number 21, Kyle Heckman, the 5'10", 145-pound sophomore, as he was taken off the field. He walked off, but, uh, Jerry, he uh, looks to be in some pain. Yes, he does. He was down for quite a while while they were looking at him, and, you know, he's in that linebacker position, and uh, they, they need him. Yeah, you're absolutely <laughs> they right. Him. I, it's, you know, as much as Bluffton is attacking those linebacking positions, he's, they need him. So here come the Pirates. They lead 40-14 to 14 with 11-14 to go. Our timeout sponsor tonight is Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So here comes Bogart. He's in the gun. He's got number 27 behind him. That's Landon Wooster. He's got one receiver to his far left. He's got a tight end in the slot. And he takes the ball. He goes to his right. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to turn it up into the middle. And he's going to pick up about five yards. Garrett and a nice Bogart play by Garrett right Bogart. Number 67, Isaac Kill. So Garrett Bogart, watch that linebacker following the whole time, spying on him. And and he gets about four, six yards, so it's going to bring up second and four line. from the 42-yard line. And, you know, if you're Spencerville, again, you know, coach is saying, you know, play every play. Play every play hard. You know, they stop, no gain there. That's a positive. Absolutely. This is Bogart in the gun. He's got Wooster to his right. He's going to hand the ball to Wooster. He goes off left tackle. He's got a little step on him, and he's going to be taken down by the Bearcats. And here comes another flag in from behind the quarterback. The down by number 26, We're going to get a hold, Lehman. and that's going to take number that ball 50, back. Dylan Cook, flag on the play. Nothing drives a coach crazier oh, than I holding know. penalties. Yeah, that's that's a, a game. It can be a game changer because, sure. man, you go from a first down to now a second and whatever, <laughs> 20, whatever. It's like it holding be. on the Pirates. Coach Richards just looks out in disgust. And I really like his game plan tonight. I like, I like both these coaches. I think I they too. both do a tremendous I job. And, uh, and 15 from the coaches don't get enough credit sometimes. And these two guys, they're not looking for the credit, but uh, I'm going to give it to them anyways because they both do a tremendous job. Yep. Young teams and, you know, trying to build game by game. So second and 15, as Jerry was so correct in saying, they'll bring it up the middle. You know, gain of about maybe a yard, yard and a half. Landon they keep Wooster that clock carry, running at the 10-22 mark. 58, Landon Javier Wooster Franco. on the carry. You know, Danny, and the totally third, useless information right now. I'm waiting for it. Yards, <laughs> you talked about this being line. such a great setting. Yes. I'm pulling up here tonight. I'm seeing it. it's an awesome place. Yeah, yeah. You know, community uh, setting. And all I can think of is Kenny Chesney's The Boys of Fall. That's so, right. You know, I, That's I right. get totally useless information, but at the same time, it just 
talks about the value of high school football. Well, I wrote an article earlier this week for 419sports.com, and I talked about nothing brings a community together yep. quite like having a common goal. And uh, when you uh, when your common goal Gavin is Bogart is to be above everybody down, else, and you all work to get there, you know, it's, it's kind of neat to watch. And that's, that's something too, you know, that that saying of you know, it takes a village. I, I, yeah. Maybe it's a little overused, but maybe it's used a lot of times without. Battle, what does it really mean? This does not and occur like this if it isn't for these people. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Community pride. But but you look over here and you've got you've got 150 students over here all dressed up and wanting to support yes. their their yep. brothers and sisters and. Yeah, so, yeah, a great setting here for high school football. So here come the Pirates there in pump formation as Basil will punt it away. we got Nate Colter deep. The ball's going to hit at the 30. Roll to the 25 to the 21-yard line where they'll take over with 9.05 to go. And, you know, if you're Coach Summers, you know, you come out that second half. What's your goal? Basil's play every play. You know, let's, let's just keep at it. Well, right there. Get out them. There's your first stop, yep. and that's There's exactly what you – you, yep. regardless of what you do offensively right. all night, you had to get that first stop, and they get that first stop. Right. You're not ahead. You're not going to magically score a 26-point touchdown. You know, but, again, it's a positive going into the next series. That's a great point. So uh, had a great visit at halftime with Nate Stidham and the Bearcat. I like to call it the Bearcat Network. Those guys do a great job of yes, covering the Bearcats. And he come over and he, <laughs> the look on his face was, oh, boy, it's a rough night for my Bearcats. <laughs> so here comes Henline. He's going to hand the ball off. Goes across the 25 to the 30. He's going to pick up another Charles River Carter first Lehman down. Carter Lehman with some nice nine. moves there in the middle Lane of the field. Number 33, Cameron Coughlin brings up another first down for Spencerville. Our first down sponsor tonight is Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Jerry, we won't we won't give any scores out, obviously, because these are on, most of these games are on tape delay. But we've seen a lot of a lot of games that kind of turned me a little bit. I thought they'd be yeah, a little closer. Here, a lot of high flying here. scores. So here comes Henline as he throws the ball across to the left side. Looks like number Grant four, Duty. Grant Duty. Ball's incomplete. Ball's incomplete with 8.36 to go. Tough pass on the run like that, even though he is going to his strong arm, but still tough a pa tough pass. I love these small towns that have their own networks and their own guys on the Internet doing these games, and they just the passion they have for these kids in these communities is second to none. Here comes Henline. He's in the gun. He rolls up, steps up in the pocket. Oh, no, and Duty had the ball. And again, you said it earlier, he was running before he caught it. But even there, I, I love the way. For I really love the way Henline, you know, went back, stepped up into the pocket, yep. and and took his time. Um, he's good. Yeah, and another injury, number 11 for the Bluffton Pirates is down. That is Braden Jordan. We've seen him tonight. He's been on the field quite a bit, and he looks like they're looking at his – oh, it's a cramp. I, I was so, going to say, yeah, I think it is a Yeah, cramp. I think you're right, and uh, I don't like to say it's a good sign, but that is a good sign when they're – you know, we, that, that's something they can take care of right away. So, You know, Danny, you were talking about, you know, the, the communities and things like that. On another totally worthless information. Sure, absolutely. I was driving to it's 40 Fremont. to 14, Jerry. <laughs> I was driving to Fremont today. Yeah. And I passed through a couple school districts. I passed through a couple schools that had, you know, teams, sure. you know, playing. And I, in my geography and my history classes, did not know there were that many nations. Um, <laughs> Everybody, it's a little bit overused right now. I think so. <laughs> I went by Redskin Nation or oh. by whatever nation. It's like so man. you weren't you weren't teaching the right things. No, the kid. I obviously didn't. <laughs> so I just get a kick out of it when I see it. I mean, again, sometimes I see a, a community that has like you know 200 residents, and yet it's the nation. I'm, I, I, I'm going to talk to Ben Reif, our director, and I'm going to see if we can't get a segment each week called Jerry's Useless Facts <laughs> because. <laughs> So here come the Bearcats. On the, on the other side, it really does tell you the problem. Absolutely, I absolutely. Henline steps up in the pocket. He's going to run with the ball, tries to go through the 40-yard line, and he has hit hard. He's taken down. Headline He'll go to about the 42-yard line. He's going to be about two yeah, yards about short seven, of a first down. What a tough kid. He went right into that, didn't bat an eye about going into that. And Chris Summers doesn't even hesitate on going for it on fourth down, which is, I think, the right call yep. down. 40 to 14 with 8.03 to go. Here's Henline in the gun. He's got two to his left. He's got a single setback and two to his right. He's got Nate Colter to the far right side. Yeah. 
Henline receives the ball, looks across the middle. He's got heavy pressure, throws to the middle. He's got his man out there for a first down. He's up to the 35, to the 30-yard line, and a nice reception by number 13, Hayden Heyman. Hayden Heyman's had a nice game. I love it. They went for it on fourth down. We knew they would. But again, I'm, I'm over overemphasizing it, but I really love the patience of, of Henline back in the, in the pocket. Well, you know, he started as a freshman, Jerry, and then he took the last two years off. I'm not real sure the circumstances really don't. None, none of my business, but he's back here now, and you can tell why they're really excited about him running the, running the show here. And that's, that is why they're going to be successful sure. down the road. Okay, here's Henline. He steps up in the pocket. He's got his man across the middle. And number 26, Carter Lehman, catches the ball, and he was hit immediately. That pass is complete to Carter Lehman, brought down by number 27, Landon Worcester. And that looks like it's close to another first down. No, they're going to give looks him like a first down. first down. So another Charles River first down. And, again, we talk about that. I've, again, talked about it quite a bit. But, you know, that halftime talk, you know, win the second half win the second half. And right now, they are. Absolutely. Great job defensively by the Bearcats of holding and, and getting, forcing the uh, punt. And here they come, trying to put some more points on the board. So Henline throws deep into the end zone. He's going to overshoot the intended Headline target, intended number 10, Dylan Short. Dylan Short and uh, just over the reach and of Short. And covered very well. And that's why yes, he was. that pass wasn't overthrown. It was, it was put out there for a reason. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So 7.02 to go here in the third quarter. Pirates lead 40-14. Bearcats trying to inch their way back into this contest. Here's Henline. He's going to fake the handoff, keep it himself, go off the left side. He's going to pick up about four to five yards. Gosh, nice Henline run by Henline. Brought down by number 33, Can Coughlin, and number 65, Preston Culver. Short gain on the play. Look, Jerry, they're, 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 they're probably going to come up short tonight, Spencerville. Spencerville. But I was talking to some folks earlier, and it's never too early, and people go, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're pushing yourself. Spencerville is going to have one of the best basketball teams in the area yes. this year. I'm yes. telling you, they are absolutely loaded. I'm so excited to get to cover their games. And, uh, you know, Kevin Sensabaugh is going to do another fantastic yes, job. Does. Yep, he sure does. So there's the ball. Goes to Colter across the middle. He's going to get into the end zone. Oh, man, did he fall short? Yes, he got in. Yep. I had one official give me the signal and the other one. But that's a Bearcat touchdown. Nate Colter from 20 yards out scampers into the end zone, and that cuts the lead to 40-20. to 20. No fireworks, Jerry. No, 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 no Springfield fireworks. What a great drive. Absolutely. What a great drive, and that's after holding Bluffton. I mean, we're well into the second half here, and you've well, won the third quarter yeah, so far. Yeah, we talk about uh, what a great job Chris Summers does, and that is proof there. They come out, they do exactly as he says, hold them, get the ball, execute your offense, and bam, here we go. So that kick is up, and it is good. So with 6.22 to go, the Bearcats inch back in. It's 40-21. to 21. Watching high school sports right here on WOSN. We're back here at Bluffton High School with 6.22 to go. The Spencerville Bearcats put together a really nice drive to close that gap to 40 to 21. Jerry, they get a stop here. I, I, look, I don't know what will happen, but uh, anything's possible with this high flying up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's that weighs heavily right now on Coach Richards and, the, and Bluffton. Don't let him back in. Don't let him back in. So here come the Bearcats. This is number 17, Emerson Lehman. He's waiting for the... Officials, a time to kick it off, and away we go here. Ball goes deep over the head of the Bluffton receiver. And you know what? I, I Emerson didn't Lehman's kick is into the end zone. Too much, but Emerson Lehman, their kicker. And ten. Wow. <laughs> we said it. We got two of the best kickers yeah. in the area here. And you know what? In, in games, we all know the kicking game is an important part of it, but boy, some of these games, you pin somebody deep like that, or oh, you give yeah. them the run, the run back option. Yeah. Or he's got a strong foot, as we saw in that last uh, extra point. But, you know, the, the field goal opportunities, that, that's a weapon. That's a weapon that will give them a very good Well, any time you see high school teams spend a lot of time on special teams, it matters. And, and they do a great job at both these schools here. So here come the Pirates, a little razzle-dazzle here. Here comes Bogart off the right side. He's got one man to beat to the sidelines. He's get up, and he goes across the 50. He's at the 45. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. 
He's going to score a Bluffton Pirate touchdown. If that is not a highlight reel, I don't know what is. Unbelievable. How many tackles he broke, how many cuts he made. What oh my goodness. Run. He takes a reverse handoff and goes the length of the field, 80 yards. And it looks like he's down on the field, Jerry. And I did not see anybody take him down. If he fell down or what happened, but. Uh, I don't want to make light of it, but he may no. be just exhausted. <laughs> You're right. He's in the end zone, and his, uh, his teammates have walked away from him. So that might be the case. He just may be exhausted. But uh, the trainer's going to go out there and see what's going on. So, wow. Talk about a response. <laughs> You said it. This weighs heavy on Chris Richards. Well, not much more. <laughs> no. <laughs> so just like that, the Bluffton Pirates go 80 yards in one play, 46-21, 6 3 to go. You know, it's six points, but it's also so much emotion you know, sure. and so much momentum. And, you know, maybe not affecting the outcome overall, but it does affect the – the psyche of everybody well, on that field. You, you go from being Spencerville to getting the stop, taking your kids down, scoring the touchdown, thinking, hey, if we get another stop, we're right back in this game, and bam, 80 yard later, it's over. Does anybody want to know how much the mental part of the game is? <laughs> exactly. Right, there it is. Yeah, so number 21 for Bluffton, Gavin Bogart with the touchdown. He is going to be Let's able to walk Gavin off Bogart. the field. And looks like he's okay. Not real sure what happened, but uh, he's coming off pretty good there. Just a, again, just an incredible run, incredible cut. Well, we talked about it earlier, Jerry. He averages 20 yards, 19.2, let's call it 20. Yeah. Uh, he averages big time yardage when he does catch the ball. And you see why? He's an explosive player. And uh, uh, kick for the Pirates. It's, it's, it's the hard to tell what a game like this can do to a program like Bluffton if they get that record to 500. And, you know, the sky's the limits for the Pirates. Well, one thing for sure, they, they're dangerous. Sure and are, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, I don't care record-wise or anything. They're dangerous, and that goes with what I said Battle's earlier. They could good. beat anybody. Bring absolutely. So. With 6.03 to go in the third quarter, the Bluffton Pirates lead 47-21 right here on WOSN. Gavin Bogart, the 5'10 junior, takes it 80 yards to stretch the lead to 47-21. And, Jerry, you look at Gavin That's Bogart and Garrett Bogart, they're juniors. Yeah, <laughs> they're coming back next year, and they've got some young kids uh, at skill positions. So the Bluffton Pirate program's in good hands. Yeah, and that, you know, that kind of goes to what we talked about early in the game of a very, very young team, and you're just trying to get better and better every single week. And no doubt they're doing that. So here's Basil's kick as it goes down to about the 15-yard line. It's picked up by Carter Lehman at the 10-yard line. Carter's going to go to the middle of the field, and he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. And that's where they'll take over, first and 10. Carter Lehman on the return, brought down by number 21, Gavin Bogart, number 81, Gabe 5.56 to go. Go ahead, Jerry. And right away, who makes that tackle on special teams? <laughs> Gavin Bogart. Of course he does. <laughs> Brings up first down for Spencerville. 5.56 to go. Danny Holbrook, Jerry Snodgrass from Bluffton High School. Week four of the high school football season, this key Northwest Conference match. So here comes Josh Henline. He's got Carter Lehman in the backfield with him. He's got Nate Colter split out wide to the left. He takes the snap, looks across the field, steps up in the pocket. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to run. He's going to be a hit hard by those linebackers. Number Josh 81 the for the number Pirates. Number Gabe Meza. Gabe Meza. 65, Preston Culver, number 33, Cam Coughlin. You know, I, I Second down saw it today, and I might be off a number, a, a couple numbers, but no one I thought I saw today. Right, I thought I saw today that there are 54 Ohio players playing on NFL teams this weekend or this week in the opening NFL, and, and I always used to say that because. I check it about every year, but Ohio's almost always had the fifth most NFL players sure. uh, playing, you know, active. Now, again, that can change week by week. But it tells you that we're doing something right with football in Ohio. And that's why I don't like to see, on the play. you know, people talk about spring football. And I know that people will totally argue with me. But, you know, why? We don't need it. I mean, yeah. Football's in pretty good hands right now. Sure. And I give our coaches association a lot of credit. Well, and, and and my and I completely agree with you. My my point to that whole thing was let's focus on 
improving the I baseball in the state of Ohio. Yes. But now, yeah. to, to baseball's credit, th just lousy weather. It, it right. really is. But let's improve that. Let's see what we can do. Let's make some changes here and there. And I, I agree with you. There's no reason for the spring football. And I was very proud of the fact when I was with my former employer that we did, we entertained a proposal to go two weeks longer in the summer. Uh, Iowa plays baseball in the summer. Oh, okay. There's Carter Lehman. He catches the ball on the flat. He's down the left sideline. He's got one man to beat, and he's going to be taken Carter down for a big gain up to the 30-yard line. And Worcester brings up first down for Spencerville. Now, I will say next week probably both teams will talk a little bit about defense. <laughs> well, you know, we talked about that in the pregame, Jerry, about the defensive struggles both these teams have had. And, and if you could, you know, I don't like to nitpick, but if you could pick things apart, that's what both these teams are really struggling with right now. Well, you also know that coaches will nitpick things apart. Sure. You can win by whatever, and there'll be something – you know, they want to focus well, on Well, the other thing, too, Jerry, when you play a spread offense, look, with 420 to go, you've held them to 21 points. I, I'm kind of happy right yes. now if you're bluffing, you know. So here's Henline. He throws it deep down the right side. He's got short out there, and it goes off of his hands, and he had him wide open on the right side. That was, a, that was pass two inches off. Three it was an impressive three. pass, Jerry. Yes, it was. That was an impressive was pass. And Henline's holding his back. Let's hope he's not hurt, but uh, – Nice pass by that young man. He does a great job of stepping up in the pocket and feeling the awareness around him. He really knows the game. You can see that. 4.18 to go. Pirates lead 47-21. Henline's in the gun. He's got Carter Lehman to the left. Nate Corder wide out right. Here comes Henline. And they're coming. And they're coming hard for him. Henline steps up. He's got a man across the middle, Nate Coulter, and he throws a strike Henline across the middle. To Goes to Nate about Coulter. the five-yard line, and here come the Bearcats right back in business and Henline again. Henline has read those linebackers coming yes. extremely well. And Coulter just stepped in right behind him where they came off that right. blitz, and a great job of pitch and catch by those two. You can tell they spent a lot of time together. 4-11 yep. to go. They're in the red zone. Tonight's red zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Here's Henline again. He's going to be taken down for about a two-yard gain. Tonight's red, Science, red zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call right Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free Western. estimate. Matt's Heating and Cooling is our red zone sponsor. Second down and goal for Spencerville. 3.45 to go. Clock continues to run. 47-21 Pirates lead. Henline's got Carter Lehman to the left. He's got Smart and Colder to his right. I'm sorry, Short and Colder to his right. Here comes Carter Lehman up the middle. He's going to take it up to a gain of about four yards. That'll put the ball at about the four-yard line. Carter Lehman on the carry Make it down third down. 56, Ian Raymond, among others. Short gain on the play. Not only good solid running by Carter Lehman that time, but also good job of picking the hole. You know, he had one thing shut off. He sure did. Nice cut to the left. So here come the Bearcats as they're knocking on the door again. Here's Henline in the pocket. Throws off to the right side. He's got Carter Lehman out there, and he takes it into the end zone for a Bearcat touchdown. That's a Springfield Carter Firework Lehman. touchdown. Lehman. Springfield Lehman. Fireworks Lehman. in Bluffton Lehman. is your one-stop shop Lehman. for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week from 9 to 8. Hey, I'm... We have 68 points scored in this game. It's crazy. We should have fireworks. <laughs> we should, well, we do on the field. Can't let that go, can we, I? No. <laughs> I, Hey, listen, if enough people get on board, we might yeah. be able to have it done. So Josh Henline throws another strike, and the Bearcats inch closer at 47 to 27. So extra point snap is back. Hold is good, and the kick is good to make it 47-28 with 2.54 to go. Lehman is good, making your score Bluffton 47, Let me correct 28. my math scores on that. I was looking at the 41 on the one board down yes. there. Yes. So, yeah, so I'll correct my math score, my math. 47. It's more points than that, <laughs> yes. I didn't question it. I can't use my calculator uh, right now, so. <laughs> That's right. So 47 to 28 with 254 to go. Most of the crowd has stayed here tonight. Sure. This, look, it's been an entertaining, entertaining game. You're getting to see some high flying offense. The Bluffton student section is, uh, I'm not real sure what the theme is tonight. If it's a neon road construction crew. I was say it's road construction. Road construction. Well, they're, they're okay. 
they're having a good time down there in the crowd, and they look like they're enjoying tonight's festivities. I, every time I see at a game and I see the student sections organized like they are, I, I just I look back to the golden megaphone that we had. Oh, that was great. That was, that was so many letters from principals yeah. and, and superintendents talking about, you know, the enthusiasm and the collectiveness of kids. Yeah. And, and one of the things we tried to do is like, you know, I always knew how kids can get Ever a little out of hand sometimes in those years, but at the same time, Landon like Shuttler really coaxing and them and encouraging them to be the positive. Bars. And I haven't heard anything negative. No, no. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. I, I don't want to squelch their voices, and you are right. Some things are said that shouldn't be said, sure. and I get it. But uh, let's, let's celebrate kids being kids yes. and enjoying high school sports and, and just being and having the pride that these kids have. There's 150 kids down there who are rooting for their teammates. Uh, looks like they're going to call a touchback yep. on that. Yep, ball goes into the end zone. So that's where Bluffton will take over with 2.54 to go. And that's one of the differences in high school. Once that ball goes into the end zone, it's not really right. Absolutely. So Spencerville, you look at their schedule this year, Jerry. They gave up 31 to Elida in a loss, 31 nothing. They come back, they beat Paulding at 37-13. They lose last week to Fort Laramie, 35-7. And here again, they're giving up 47. Well, and, and we don't know how many you know yes. points could be scored here with the high strike uh, offense from the Bluffton Pirates. So uh, defense is a necessity to work on. But uh, if anybody can figure it out, it's Chris Summers sure, and that crew I'm out sure. there. And when I say figure it out, I mean, you know, teach the kids what they need right. to know. Uh, you know, you can't play for them, but he'll, he'll let them know what is wrong and what is right. So here. And sometimes matchups just, oh, you sure. know, just, it's just matchups. You know, so again, you're going against a very tough offensive, you know, the, Garrett, the, the on carry brought down option by oriented Carter Lehman and offense. Sure. We've seen that Bobby on a couple Franco. of the reverses. Um, it's just tough. You know, you may come out next week and play great on defense. And here's Garrett Bogart with a big first down run as he gets to the boundary and he stretches those chains again. That is a, another Charles River first down. So first and 10 from the 39-yard line with 2.40 to go. Pirates lead 47-28. Jerry, I've talked a lot tonight. I'm going to need a real cold drink after this <laughs> game. <laughs> Lots of time. Oh, the ball gets flipped to Bogart and he loses it. And it was picked up. Midair by number carry. one Landon Shuttler, and that's a highlight reel right there. It hits off the face Ain't mask of Bogart, and Landon Shuttler picks it up in midair. Well, I haven't Wesley talked Mack. too much about Landon Shuttler, but Second what a nine. good athlete he is all the way around, and that's part of the reason why he's able to pick that thing up in the air. <laughs> Absolutely. So here come the Pirates with 155 to go. On the move again at the 40-yard line. Bogart's in the gun. He's got a single set back. He's got Carter Lehman. He pitches the ball over to the left side. Carter Lehman cuts it up the middle. Oh, and he almost broke it down, and he was taken down by number carry. 67 for Pushed the Bearcats, Royce Kill. And as I'm watching that play develop. Isaac Kill. Sorry, Isaac Coming Kill. First I, don't, I don't think Pirates. that Spencerville. They, they held their assignments well. They did. It they was did. just a great running effort. And that's, <laughs> it's a little shaking and baking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, coach, we're doing everything we can. <laughs> and I said Carter Lehman. Carter Lehman, of course, plays for Spencerville. I'm getting my numbers mixed up here, my teammates and everything else. So, Long night here at the office in Bluffton yes. High School. <laughs> so Bluffton taking their time here with 118 to go, 117. They lead 47 to 28. It took too much time. Yeah, they're going to have to call a timeout. They'll take a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout time out. here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back here at Bluffton High School. Where the Pirates are moving the ball down the field on the 46-yard line. Bogart's in the gun. He's got Bogart in motion. He fakes the handoff. He's going to follow the lead block from his brother. Tries to get around the line. And a nice job by number four for the Bearcats. That's Grant Duty. Great job of getting into the backfield four, and taking Duty. down Bogart. And I think, you know, the problem with that play, the timing was off. Yes, yes. Uh, he faked that handoff, but... He may have wanted to give that. I, I was getting ready to say, I, yeah, well I think that was the play. Because his brother kind of gave him a look like, oh, yes. we, we screwed that up. Yep. 
And that's okay. You can blame your brother, the quarterback. Fans may not realize sometimes about how much practice it takes to, to make all those moving parts work together. The motion, you know, being in the right spot when the snap is. So here's Bogart, he throws the ball out to the left side. This is number 17 for the Pirates. Hayden Durth, Hayden Durth 6'3", Jr. Brought down at about the Goes to about the 46-yard line. Third and, about third ten. and 10 with, as the clock is going to run down. And that will be the last play of the That'll third quarter. Third so third after three quarters, quarters from Bluffton High 40 School, 40 the Bluffton Pirates lead the Spencer Bearcats 47-28. We're back here at Lufton High School. 47 to 28, the Pirates lead. A fake throw there, and he hands off to his brother. He gets around the right side. He's being chased by several Bearcats inside and out. My goodness, Jerry, he's got some moves. <laughs> and, you know, and, and the thing is, the Bearcats are right yeah, there. They are. On to carry. And he just leaves them, you Brought know. Down by number 67. Breaks their ankles <laughs> and kill. <laughs> just gets away from it. Garrett Bogart fakes the throw, and he hands off behind the back to Gavin Bogart, his brother. Gavin had an 80-yard run earlier in the game today. He picks up about 18 yards there, and here they go, first down on the Web Insurance scoreboard. <clears throat> well, for the most part, too, the second half, the second half especially, it's just been big plays. Yes, it I has. Mean, that's, yeah. you know, they're, Bearcats are doing a good job, and then all of a sudden a big play hits them. There's number 27 runs Landon up the middle, Wooster Landon the Wooster. Down by number 50, Gains Dylan about Cook. three or four yards. I think they feel if they can score on this possession, then you'll see a lot of people coming in. I was going to say, I think I think they'll raise the white Brody flag to, a, to an extent and get some of these younger kids in there. And Look, you get everybody, you know, you can complain about, you know, when your kids go in or whatever, but you got to get your starters to work, and they've yes, got to have do. many meaningful minutes, and, and they've got to have a cohesive unit, especially that offensive line. So, yeah, no fault here. And, you know, too, you know, what, one of the things you don't want, I mean, there are so many big plays by Spencerville, too, that, you know, a couple scores, and Absolutely. You know, you're kind of playing on your heels then. Land and Worcester again. Land and Worcester the carry. Worcester right the carry. Bring up Heimann. third in about three. 10.40 to go here from Bluffton High School. Peyton Heyman. Third and four for the Pirates from the 23-yard line. This is where it's been very tough for the Bearcats, too. You know, they'll, they'll get themselves in a position where they're holding third and, you know, medium, and then they give up a play. And that's a, yeah. that's, well, I shouldn't say they give up. No, I, I, no, I understand. He does a very good job but of executing. You look out there at the Spencerville defense, and a lot of their guys got their hands on their hips, and that's the first sign of, hey, we're tired, coach. And, you know, they're playing hard. But uh, you can see they've been on the field a long time tonight. So there's the pass over to the right side. It is caught at Aaron about the 15-yard line to Braden Jordan. Brings up another first and That day. is a Charles River first down. Charles River and Spencerville, the premier pharmaceutical chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Charles River, our first down sponsor. Our sponsors are getting their word in tonight. I'm telling you, you Jerry. Me too, that one. <laughs> you know what, though? How, how possible they make all this. And that's oh, so yeah. Good. Sure do. Nice move there by Bogart as he dipsy doos into the, the – or Landon carry. Wooster, excuse me. And he was just 13. moving left, right, left, right. And he does a great Hayden job. Hayden. And Hayden, Hayden, and Hayden number four. Grant and Duty. number four. Duty is the one that really yes. – I guess they, first the combination there, Duty's the hit looked much bigger. And they're in the Red Zone tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. It's your home in the energy efficient zone. Call Matt's Heating and Cooling. Go to Matt, call Matt'sHeating.com to schedule your free estimate. Matt's Heating and Cooling is our Red Zone sponsor. So first and five from the five, 9.21 to go as the Pirates try to punch it in the end zone again here. Here's Bogart handing the ball off to the middle. They'll go almost to the goal line, and he inches closer but does not get in. Landon Wooster again. Landon Wooster. Short game brought down by number 67. And they're using as much of that Isaac play clock Hill. as they can. And, sure. you know, those younger guys on the sideline, are, come on, hurry up, Second hurry up. We want to get in. We want to play. <laughs> You've heard that noise yeah. from the uh, sidelines, I'm assuming. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so Bluffton taking their time, 15 seconds on the play clock. They'll let that wind down to about probably four to three seconds. 8.41 to go. And it looks like a little slippage yeah. there. And... Just a broken play there. 
which uh, they're not going to object to, Jerry, with the no. clock running. And Brings up third and three or four. Third and three from three-yard line. Play recovered by Bluffton. 8.22 to go. Pirates lead 47-28. Danny Horbrook, Jerry Snodgrass, happy to bring you tonight's high school football action in the Northwest Conference between the Bluffton Pirates and the Spencerville Bearcats. And we talked about it earlier, this is always a hard-fought game, and no, no question tonight, both these teams came out hard and, and came out ready to play. And uh, just uh, Bluffton has been on the uh, top end so far. Here's Bogart going across the left end. Got and in. looks like he got in for another Bluffton Aaron Pirate Bogart touchdown. touchdown. That's a Springfield Pirate. Fireworks touchdown. That'll make the score, and they've got to put it on the board there. 53 to 28. So they hang half a hundred uh, on the Bearcats. Quinn each is to hold. You know, I love these. I love the Northwest Conference games. Oh, like I talked earlier about a lot of the parity. Communities are pretty much the same. Um, support, you know, I grew up in Upper Sandusky, Ohio. It reminds me so much of <laughs> the old NOL, the sure. Northern Ohio. Oh, yeah, game. absolutely. Basil's kick is good. So Basil's Fingers kick is good, and it is 54-28. When we come back, the final 28. seven minutes and 54 seconds. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We're back here at Bluffton High School. Jerry Snodgrass and I are checking out some of the scores for tonight and uh, some stunners out there tonight, Jerry. They'll see him in the morning or see him tonight, but there are some stunners in high school football tonight in the Lima Land area. So a nice deep kick to Coulter at the goal line. He'll bring it out. He goes behind that wall and he, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, 27 Landon Wooster. That looks like James Laurinaitis. Out there. <laughs> Boy, he's had himself a game. Yes, hasn't he? he has. Tommy Eichenberg esque. Yes. I said last week when I watched the Buckeyes play Notre Dame, Tommy Eichenberg reminded me of what we've been missing the last four yeah, or five years. Right. He he played a rock solid game at the linebacker position, and uh, you see that out of that young man tonight, Landon Wooster. He's just he, you can just see the joy in him when he yes, plays. Yes, you can. So, what you love about kids? They just love to play. They just love to play. <laughs> so Henline's still in the game for the Bearcats, as is most of the starters, with 7.47 to go, down 54-28. Henline's in the gun. He's got two to the right, two to the left. He's under heavy pressure. He steps up, throws across the middle, and it's picked off. Gavin Bogart. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Gavin Bogart with the pick. And <laughs> Hey, he, I thought he came out of nowhere. I he thought, did. what a great pass by Henline, and it really was. It, it was. was. like, man, alive. And Go Gavin Bogart kind of baited him in. He stayed off to the right side. Henline throws back across his body. Gavin Bogart runs across the scene, picks it off, and that's where the Pirates will take over from the 29-yard line. And I might be wrong, but I think we're going to get... No? What's that? I thought maybe we'd have some subs in there now. Yeah. Probably go a player to I, I, I think you're right. So Bogart's in the gun. He's got Landon Wooster to his right. He's going to roll to the right. Looks across the middle. Throws deep down the right side. Almost picked off. And a great effort by the Bearcats. And that was number 13 for Spencerville. Hayden Heyman, who we've seen quite a bit tonight. You know, the other thing, and it's kind of ironic that I'm saying this, but, you know, I talked about loving the NWC and, you know, the games, the sure. communities. And, you know, I, I think I could ask this question. You know where most of the kids, if not all the kids from Spencerville, Spencerville are from? They're that? from Spencerville. Spencerville, yeah, right. You know, I see Boston. what you're saying. They're yeah, absolutely. You know? <laughs> Born, raised, yeah, and played yeah. with these kids their yeah. whole life, yeah. I know there are some exceptions to that. And, sure. You know, I know that, Worcester, once again. You know, people are transient today, but it's kind of ironic that I'm saying play. kind of my old job. But, but you know, at the same time, I mean, that's what makes 54. it special. Jerry, there's something about Gosh, these communities that rally around these yes. football programs. And even even those programs that aren't as successful, the community comes out to support them. I and you look at smaller schools, let's just take a Van Lu, for instance. They've got their community support.